Welcome back to Roar Tech Channel. Today, I will review the Kai Wu Tycoon 3D printer. This printer costs $469. I would consider it to be a mid price budget printer, as an entry level Ender 3 and other variants cost less than $200. This printer has a very unique appearance, and it is packed with a lot of features. Let's go through all the features. 1. An extra long base. Unlike most Cartesian style printers, this printer has a heavy, solid base, which is even longer than the maximum travel distance of the print bed, so the print bed will be supported at any point. 2. A rigid frame. This is more like a box frame instead of a gantry. This can increase the overall stability of the printer. 3. Linear motion rods on the Y and Z axes. Most budget 3D printers use rubber pulley wheels for the motion system, but using linear rods has two advantages. They move more smoothly, and they won't wear out like rubber pulley wheels do. 4. A linear rail on the X axis. The linear rail is even better than the linear rods on the Y axis. Not only is it smooth, but it's also sturdy. 5. A dual Z axis. And both sides use linear rods instead of pulley wheels. 6. A fixed print bed. As this printer came with a bed leveling sensor, the leveling springs under the bed are no longer necessary. 7. A lightweight, all-in-one direct extruder with an easy feeding knob. 8. A higher quality isolation foam on the print bed. 9. Clean cable management. As the X stepper motor, power supply, motherboard, and the screen are all inside the orange box on the side, all cables run inside the box. 10. A support micro SD card and a standard size SD card. 11. The electronics of this printer aren't outstanding, but they are better than a standard entry-level budget printer, including a 3D touch bed leveling sensor, a MKS Robin Nano V1.2 32-bit motherboard, a 3.5-inch touchscreen, silent steppers on the X and Y axes, a Meanwell power supply, a ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. Let's open the box and see what's inside. As you can see, there are only two main pieces and some parts. The assembly of this printer is really simple. Just slide the base inside the frame, tighten the four screws at the bottom, and after that, screw on the two feet at the bottom. Connect the four cables for the heated bed power, the heated bed thermistor, the Y motor, and the Y limit switch. Finally, mount the filament holder. The assembly is now done. This is definitely one of the easiest printers to assemble. I think anyone can do it within a few minutes without having to even read the user manual. First, I will preheat the printer. After the nozzle temperature reaches 200 degrees, we can feed in some filament. Just let it pass through the filament sensor, and using this knob to feed in the filament is quite easy. I will do auto home and make sure the stepper motors and the bed leveling sensor are working. Then I will try to do auto bed leveling to see if the sensor is also working. Unlike the classic Marlin, the menu doesn't have an option to set the Z offset, but there is a G code file included in the SD card, which is auto leveling. I will print this file and adjust the Z offset while printing. The printer is now preheating. Once it reaches the printing temperature, it will start printing some lines. We can now use the on-screen menu to adjust the Z offset. Just move the nozzle close enough to the bed, let the filament stick on it but make sure it's not too close, or the nozzle is going to leave a scratch on the bed. The negative 2.15 millimeter nozzle height seems perfect. We can go back to the info screen, and the settings will be saved automatically, so we only need to do this one time. Next, we will start with some simple prints like a test cube. I will use my own slicer and create a profile for this printer to slice the model. Since there is no predefined profile for this printer, 
I will just use the Creality CR6SE profile. The reason I chose this profile is because the CR6SE also doesn't support G29 in the G-code file unless you change the firmware to community firmware. The things we need to change is the bed size. The print volume is 240 by 240 by 230. We also need to change the retraction distance. Since this is a direct drive, we only need around one millimeter retraction. Let's do a quick test by slicing a calibration cube and seeing if this profile works as I expected. Since the X limit switch of this printer is located on the right and the Y limit switch is located at the front, it is the opposite of the CR6SE, so the print started from this corner. As you can see, the cube looks really nice on all surfaces. I will also try the Wi-Fi module of this printer. In order to use this feature, you need to use the screen menu to select your Wi-Fi network and enter the Wi-Fi password, just like how you would connect a cell phone to Wi-Fi. Then, it will show an IP address assigned to this printer by your router. Go to Cura and download the MKS Wi-Fi plugin. After the plugin is installed and Cura is restarted, there is still nothing changed. Since my Cura version is the latest 4.10, I am not sure if the plugin in the marketplace is updated yet. So I will go to the MKS Wi-Fi plugin GitHub and download the latest version. Unzip the files and copy everything. We want to paste these files to overwrite the existing plugin. In order to find the exact location where the plugin files are stored, go back to Cura, select Show Configuration Folder under the Help menu, go to the Plugin subfolder, MKS Wi-Fi Plugin, and go to the other MKS Wi-Fi Plugin subfolder inside. Okay, when you see all these files, paste the latest version and replace everything here. Restart Cura again. When you click Manage Printer, you will see the MKS Wi-Fi Plugin button. Click on it and check Wi-Fi support at the printer using the IP address provided. Go to the Preview Settings. We will send a preview image of the 3D model to the printer screen while printing. Now, we have enabled the Printer Wi-Fi Control feature. Click on the Monitor tab and you can move the XYZ axes using this interface, browse or print the files on the SD card, and slice a model and print over Wi-Fi directly. Let's print a spindle tramming tool using the Wi-Fi module. Instead of saving it to a disk, we will select Print over Kaiwu Tycoon. Then it will upload this print job to the printer, just like how you use a normal inkjet printer at home. When you go to the printer, you can see the preview of the print and the standard information screen. After a while, it prints successfully without any issues. I think this Wi-Fi module works much better than I expected. It's very usable and user-friendly. I will print another 3D Benchy using the Wi-Fi and compare it with those printed from other printers. As you can see, the print quality of this printer is really good. I didn't do any alignment or tuning, and I just let it print right out of the box. The cooling and overhanging parts all look good. The stringing is even slightly better than the one printed by my Prusa, so I have no complaints on the print quality. Let's talk about what I like about this printer. Obviously, the appearance is really cool. It has a unique and clean design, and many of the parts are not off the shelf. The company really put a lot of effort into the design. This results in a nice look, a sturdy frame, and clean cable management. The other thing I like is the extruder assembly. It's not a standard MK8 or an E3D V6 clone. The whole assembly is made for this printer. The extruder and the heatsink are one piece of metal, so they fit nicely in a tight space. The cooling fan is placed underneath, and it blows directly on the nozzle. Finally, the Wi-Fi module is pretty convenient. It is not as good as Octopi, but since Octopi requires another Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 to run, it would cost another $40 to $80. The ESP8266 module that came with the printer is very usable. The only minor issue is that the MKS plugin from Cura Marketplace is not updated. 
I had to download the latest version from GitHub and do some file copying and pasting to make it work. But after that, it worked really well and it was able to print directly from the computer. This is a real Wi-Fi feature that I am going to use for daily 3D printing. However, no 3D printer is perfect. So let's talk about where I think this printer can improve. The price of this printer is not cheap, but it did a really good job standing out from other entry-level budget printers in terms of appearance and features. I would suggest that Kai Wu can add a few upgrades that won't cost much, but would definitely make this machine more premium. First, the glass bed and the binder clip setup is a little bit outdated. A PEI spring steel sheet would be much nicer. Second, the extruder is a single gear metal extruder. When printing at a normal speed like 50 to 60 millimeters per second, it works perfectly fine. Since the frame and the base of this printer is super sturdy with linear rails and linear rods on the X and Y axes, they should be capable of printing much faster. If I want to print at 100 millimeters per second or faster, a dual gear extruder would be preferred. Third, this printer came with TMC2208 silent stepper drivers on the X and Y axes and an A4988 standard driver on the Z axis. I understand that the Z axis doesn't move frequently like the X and Y axes, but when you do homing, auto bed leveling, or the Z layer moves up once in a while when printing, it still makes some noise. I would like to see another silent driver on the Z axis. Finally, the 3.5 inch screen is a little small on this machine. I think a 5 inch or at least 4.3 inch screen would fit better with this printer. In conclusion, this printer is really nice and beginner friendly. It's super easy to assemble and it prints really well out of the box. After the Wi-Fi feature is set up properly, it works just like an inkjet printer and allows you to print directly from your computer. If your budget permits it and you are looking for something better than an entry-level 3D printer with a nicer appearance and more features, you could definitely consider this Kaiwu Taikon printer. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week. But Octopi requires another Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 to run, which would cost another $40 to $80. Finally, the Wi-Fi module is pretty convenient. It is not as good as Octopi. Finally. Finally, the Wi-Fi module.